Inesh Tech and Ingenieria Radio present Inesh Tech Science Bit, a monthly signature dedicated to decode science and technology trends. Inesh Tech Science Bits, decoding science bit by bit. Hello, welcome to another episode of Science Bits, a podcast promoted by Inesh Tech and Ingenieria Radio that tries to go further into the main trends in science and technology. Have you ever thought how the filters you apply on your photos work? How does your smartphone know where to put those funny dog ears or even how to mark your Facebook friends? All that technology comes from computer vision, a field that by incorporating different techniques, including artificial intelligence, teaches computers to interpret and understand the visual world, basically to see and react to the world around. The first experiences using computer vision started in 1950, but the progresses have been surprising up to the point of having systems today that can even more, that can be even more accurate, that's right, than humans can. Without even knowing it, we use computer vision every day through smartphones or computers, when we navigate on social media, research the internet, or even use different applications. And the list goes on. Besides entertainment, more serious domains such as security, health, sports, media, energy, and mobility, and so many others, have already been working with solutions based on this technology, and the range of possibilities is endless. To talk to us about computer vision and the work that Inesh Tech has been developing in that area, we have here with us today two researchers from the Center for Telecommunications and Multimedia, Paula Viena and Pedro Carvalho. Welcome both. How are you doing? Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for this invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, I hope that uh, we have uh, an interesting uh, meeting and conversation here. Thanks a lot. Yes, thank you. It's very nice to be here. I uh, follow the words of Paula, and I hope this is a very interesting conversation. Yes, I'm sure it will be. So, uh, Paula, let me start with you. Uh, so that the people uh, that are hearing us can better understand the subject, tell us, what is computer vision and how does it actually operate? Uh, in fact, Katerina, I think that you described computer vision very well at your introduction. So, uh, as you already said, the main idea is to be able to put computers understanding uh, the same way we do, human do, when looking to a picture or to an image, okay, looking at the visual aspects of uh, our uh, surrounding um, areas or artifacts and so on. If we go further in the scientific areas, uh, it includes a set of different areas that range from math, uh, signal processing, intelli artificial intelligence, and so on. And as you already also said, uh, your introduction was very interesting. In fact, uh, there is a range of applications that we can think of and that uh, um, we use every day. Uh, we can be talking about uh, more creative things like uh, content creation, but uh, we can also be talking about autonomous driving, security, surveillance, uh, or if uh, you can go also on the medical area, if you think that computers can uh, help uh, uh, doctors to analyze images. So this is the, the, the main uh, grants to, to, to describe what computer vision is. Yes, thank you. So uh, I know you're both working together uh, in several projects based on this technology. Can you tell us why you found this framework so, so interesting or what were you actually planning to achieve when you began? Well, I started quite a long time ago uh, at Inesk uh, working on image processing. By then, we would not will not call it uh, computer vision. We would say image processing, and I was still at my uh, undergraduate degree at the university. And uh, Inesk and uh, CTM um, welcomed me with an internship, so it was the start. I was welcomed uh, in a team that was already working on. Uh, mainly in the area of image and video compression and transmission. 
uh, and I started working on, also on that, image compression, and then I started uh, thinking on other aspects, like, okay, I have a lot of images, I, lot, I have a lot of videos, how do I find them uh, when uh, I have a set of files in my hard drive? So we call this uh, metadata to describe the content. So I my research area started working on that. Um, by then, well, quite a long time ago, we had some uh, very important projects with uh, the RTP, the Portuguese Broadcaster, and BBC. Uh, and I think we were looked at as uh, okay, those strange people that are talking about things like bringing uh, IT into the television domain that is a very specific area. And so I, I would say that we were looked at as strange people that were talking about things that uh, no one else could understand. And this, is, this was, in fact, I would say, uh, a vision that CTM uh, already had by, by then. We have been working, for instance, very important uh, projects uh, that the media also um, presented, uh, like Vidian and Orbit and several other European projects. And so this was the start the, that, uh, well, the group was already working. And then we started working on other application areas. And I would say that, okay, CTM is uh, really a strong and solid group on these areas. What about you, Pedro? When did you start? Well, uh, I entered INESC uh, after graduating and before starting my master's, I entered to the group that Paula mentioned, which was working on these topics of uh, bringing IT to the broadcasting world and uh, uh, working on the metadata. So I also started on that, uh, specifically metadata that enabled uh, the reusability and adaptation of the content. But then I also started looking at what happens before we have the metadata. So for my PhD, I started working on computer vision, namely on people detection and tracking in, uh, in video sequences. Uh, and I found that very interesting. And it also led to other activities in, and other projects more focused now on the computer vision. So now I'm trying to bridge the two parts, which is the computer vision to extract knowledge uh, that can then be uh, applicable in metadata to improve reusability, to enrich the content and the experience of the users? Well, I know uh, that there's a project in CTM uh, that it's mentioned, like it's called Photo in Motion. And I'm aware that it was recently acknowledged by the European Commission's Innovation Radar Initiative. And I believe it is related to computer vision. Um, how did this happen and what does it mean to, to the work already developed that you were talking about? Well, this is a project for the emotion. Uh, the main idea is that we have a photo, a picture, a still picture, and we want, we want to, to, to generate an appealing video. Okay, so if you, a short clip of video, but uh, for instance, let's, let's look at an example. Uh, you take a picture in a fashion show uh, and the idea is that uh, the tools that we develop enable creating a, a, a video clip in the moment and for instance, publish it in on, on social networks. So the impact of your work as a photographer in this uh, fashion show uh, is uh, quite uh, immediate and uh, so it will, have, it will have a, a bigger impact. Um, you may say that, uh, okay, but okay, I, I can already find, for instance, in Facebook, uh, some videos being created based on the posts I did before with my photos. But if you look at, the, at those uh, technologies, most of the times they are random generations of clips. Okay, so they take the picture and they don't use any intelligence to decide how the video will look like. The innovation that was, um, uh, that we were uh, recognized by the European Commission is exactly on this intelligence that we uh, have on finding important aspects, objects, for instance, in the image, and use this information, as Pedro was already uh, saying, this, uh, this keyword metadata, so data describing other data is very important in our work. So we generate this metadata 
that enables us focusing on specific aspects of the image. Let's go back to the fashion show. Let's imagine that the, you are uh, taking a photo in a fashion show, but, that, but that you know that it's a jewelry fashion show. And so what is important is not the shoes or the dress, but is the earrings or the necklace. And so we can detect those objects and then create the video focusing on those objects and not on the, on the other aspects that are not really relevant for this event. Um, we are in fact doing a final demo of this project in uh, two weeks and uh, uh, the research part of the project is finishing, but we really think that there is a future on the, on the results. Very well. Uh, let me uh, note another, another project I believe you're working on. It's called Chic. Uh, and I think Ineshtek is one of the main associates. And, and this was considered like the largest national project in the media sector, which is very important. So how does computer vision serve the media sector? Uh, you talked a little bit about this at the beginning, but how is this useful for the audience at large? Well, you can, Chic is a very, as you said, a very big project uh, focusing on uh, different uh, application areas, not only media, but also in education, immersive video and audio and so on. But uh, we, we were focusing, uh, in fact, on um, a challenge that may have an impact not only in the broadcaster inside for the, the people that work there, for the content creators and journalists, but also for me that, uh, for instance, as you know, that most of the broadcasters have a, a web page where I can uh, see the content that they have been broadcasting a few days or sometime, uh, some time ago. And uh, when you go to the, to the web portal of the broadcasters, you may want to find, for instance, uh, in which clips uh, can I find Cristiano Ronaldo and, or the mayor of Porto? Okay? And so you search by, for instance, by the name. But then, for instance, Cristiano Ronaldo may be found in a one hour clip and you have to be looking uh, through, through the, 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 the full video to find that Cristiano Ronaldo is only appearing uh, 30 seconds at the minute 23. And so this take, take, takes time uh, for you. You will not find what you are looking for. And the technology we developed uh, is uh, in fact trying to solve this problem. So we are using computer vision, computer vision and machine learning approaches to be able to uh, process all the information that the broadcaster may have on their archives and to index this, meaning that uh, when our technology will, uh, will be made available, I will be searching and the answer of the system will be, you can find Cristiano Ronaldo for one minute at the minute X of this uh, given video. So you, it will have also an impact on, on our daily search in the web. Yes, uh, you, you mentioned it already twice, is the, uh, the, the impact it has on the average consumer. And, uh, and that's one of the main advantages of all the progress made by artificial intelligence. Uh, and people use smartphones, for instance, every day. So it's very easy for them to have that, the access to that kind of, of information and data control. So uh, but what I think people don't know is that it has many other applications besides this one, these ones, and um, like health, sports, energy, and many others that we mentioned. Uh, Pedro, can you can you tell us a little bit more how those wider usages are possible? Yeah, so, computer vision, like many other areas, um, always struggled a little with the computational resources that were available. So more robust, complex algorithms required more processing, which was not uh, easily available. Uh, but the evolution has accompanied strongly. So we now have very powerful hardware at more accessible prices for the average consumer. There's also the question of the cloud, which can provide uh, an elastic, flexible processing capability. So all of this made possible many different new algorithms, many new different applications uh, of computer vision. Uh, so 
now even with the graphic processing units uh, somewhere person in, the, in their house in their computer even on their smartphones they now come available with, with artificial intelligence dedicated processors so we can run all of these algorithms on those small uh, mobile devices so this open many many different areas of applications which people often use or encounter even without noticing so we now have it on airports where you can have identity verification through facial recognition in the industry for monitoring uh, equipment where you cannot place physical sensors due to some, some requirements so uh, this visual information can provide those type of monitoring you can also help processing large quantities of information for instance as it happens on uh, on health where a lot of medical images so we can use this computer vision uh, algorithms to make an initial processing to help the doctors and present cases where there are doubts so that the doctor can make the final decision you can use it for biometric recognition for instance to access your uh, smartphone you can monitor the wellness of people for instance for elderly people in their houses uh, you, in, in vehicles to avoid uh, drowsiness, uh, fatigue, to avoid accidents, uh, even to promote physical activity or to analyze the performance of athletes in sports. Uh, uh, all of these are many different applications that are now more accessible to the average uh, person without uh, a significant investment, monetary investment. You mentioned sports for instance, uh, and that's an area that many people are interested in. H how is it possible to combine artificial intelligence and sports in a way that it has a, a potential to the general public? Well, the, the application of computer vision to sports, it's not new. So it has been used for several years, often uh, supported by uh, human intervention. So it was long applicable, for instance, in uh, tennis where you, you had the Okai system to detect if the ball passed the line or not. That system, uh, curiously, has not been adopted for football as well. There are also some very large uh, companies in the world uh, dedicated to analyze games and uh, trainings of uh, football athletes to help improve their performance. So, but that was very expensive uh, systems. Uh, now, by bringing this more available, user available technology, uh, it's been used on other different sports, even those without uh, as much money to, to uh, invest. This, for instance, is the case of um, a project that is now finishing, which is Tenure Video Sports AI, uh, which intends to help, let's say, more amateur practitioners uh, of tennis to analyze their games to help improve their performance. Even though the project focuses more on this amateur or ludic practice, it can also be used for training. And the goal here was exactly, as you said, to bring this technology to everyone. So the idea is to have a, a, a system that is flexible uh, without uh, a significant investment uh, in equipment. So it does not need any dedicated equipment. You just need your smartphone, somewhere where to place the smartphone, then you can capture yourself playing, and at the end, it will provide a set uh, of information. For instance, heat maps of your positioning, uh, how many times you hit the ball, speed of the ball. Um, uh, you can also so help determine how many uh, red life, uh, left uh, services you made, uh, and so on. And by bringing this information together, in an application, you can even compete and share it with your friends, uh, say, okay, I'm doing better than you, now uh, I'm playing better, you can track your performance uh, a long time. And it was very interesting because it brought a lot of challenges due to this flexibility in installing. So there are other systems that require specific equipment, specific ways of placing the equipment, calibration. We don't need any of that, so automatic. And we now have a, a version of the product already available at the App Store, which is Tennis Tracking AI Training, which everyone with their uh, smartphone, for now uh, iPhone, but we hope that we can also bring it to Android. Everyone can try it after this confinement ends, so everyone can go to a tennis court and try the application. 
Yes, I hope that people try that uh, because we're really, really need to do some sports and to move a little bit outside home. Uh, you were talking and Paulo also, there's so much that has been uh, done and so many areas already in motion with computer vision and artificial intelligence. But um, what does the future hold us uh, considering this? So what can we expect to witness? Well, that's uh, hard to, to say because technology mm -hmm. evolving at a very fantastic rate. So it's difficult. Uh, it's I know. <laughs> easy to let our imagination run wild and to go back to what we see on the science fiction uh, films and series <laughs> uh, and try to mimic. And in fact, some of the things that a couple of years ago we thought were just science fiction, uh, science fiction are now possible due to the technological evolution. So I believe the, this increased interest for computer vision will continue because for computers, it's the same as for us humans. So it's a way to look at the world, to absorb what is going on. And images have this richness in terms of the information that can be conveyed. So I think the interest will increase. There'll be more people investing on this, more international companies investing on this. In fact, deep learning and artificial intelligence have brought a significant boom to what can be done with computer vision. It's not sure if uh, this uh, deep learning and artificial will be the, the answer to all of the problems, but undoubtedly it will present a strong foundation for computer vision in, in the future. I think researchers uh, will mostly start focusing not only on the new amount of information that can be extracted, but also on the efficiency. Because as we move towards Internet of Things, uh, smaller devices, this electric mobility, uh, we need to be more efficient in terms of the processing and the energy that is consumed doing that same processing. So that will be a, a very strong aspect. And some new areas not, not um, easily associated with computer vision and with this technology will likely to emerge, namely applications to agriculture for disease detection, uh, the yielding of fruit trees, uh, uh, but also on resource management for water management, deforestation, food crop uh, production, uh, not to mention the, the current uh, trend in application with these autonomous systems to, to understand uh, what the environment outside and inside the car, and also for more abstract or uh, types of information, which is uh, recognizing emotions so that uh, the systems can adapt to the emotion of people. Uh, in the, uh, by summing up, I think uh, v, uh, computer vision will represent for artificial intelligence what our vision represents to our brain. So it is essential for to have actually artificial intelligence, so to have this capture of the, the environment of the world. Yes, I believe that your, your examples and your testimonies showed us that uh, uh, computer vision is everywhere, but it has still a long way to go. And um, people should know that they are in contact with it every day, but there's a still uh, many things to do, many uh, battles to conquer. And I think that uh, we're on the right path uh, in, in research so that we can explore all the world that is still to come with computer vision so that everyone can have access to it. Um, in every every way. Uh, I believe we learned a lot about computer vision and artificial intelligence and um, just with this conversation and I would like to thank you very much for your presence. We don't have any more time to explore this. If we had, we would go on and on and on. But for now, it's, it was very important. And thank you once again for your presence. And to whoever is listening to us, we will meet again soon so, to talk more about science and technology. So until then, stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Inestec and Ingenieria Radio present Inestec Science Bit, a monthly signature dedicated to decode science and technology trends. In Aztec Science Bits, decoding science bit by bit.